This famous photograph was taken by one of these men. What is your name, please? My name is Joe Rosenthal. My name is Joe Rosenthal. My name is Joe Rosenthal. Only one of these men is the real Joe Rosenthal. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, hostess of the new CBS radio show, Woman's World, Miss Betty Furness, Johnny Carson, and Peggy Cass. On to Tell the Truth with your host, Bud Collier. Thank you. Thank you and welcome once again to To Tell the Truth, brought to you this week by Salem Cigarettes. Good evening, panel. Hi, Bud. Hi, Bud. Betty, great pleasure to welcome you back to our show. Thank you, Bud. It's nice to be here. And we all kindly open up your envelopes, take out your affidavit cards for the first time, and follow along as I read from mine. I, Joe Rosenthal, am a newspaper photographer. During World War II, I was assigned to the Pacific area by the Associated Press. I made landings with the Marines on Guam, Peleliu, and Iwo Jima. It was on Iwo Jima that I shot my most memorable picture. This picture became one of the most reproduced photographs of all time. It won a Pulitzer Prize, was reproduced on a three-cent postage stamp, and was also copied for a monument, which now stands on the bank of the Potomac River in Washington, D.C. I am the man who took the famous picture of the Marines raising the stars and stripes over Iwo Jima. Signed, Joe Rosenthal. <laughs> Quite comfortable, gentlemen? Yes, all right, panel, you heard all three of these gentlemen claiming to be the photographer extraordinary, Joe Rosenthal. Let's start this questioning with Tom Poston. Tom? Thank you, bud. Uh, uh, number two, it says Marines. I thought that was the Air Force that lifted that flag there. No, it was Marines. It was Marines. I just wanted to get a little plug for my service. <laughs> <laughs> no, I knew it was Marines. Number two, uh, what famous American, what, Amer what American uh, was part of the flag-raising team there whose story is now uh, currently a motion picture? Ira Hayes. Thank you. Number three, who plays him in the motion picture? Do you happen to know? I think it's Tony Curtis. Tony Curtis. Do you know the name of the picture, number three? Well, the Outsider. Thank you. Uh, number one? Betty. Uh, number one, there was a television show about this same episode <coughs> about a year and a half ago. What was the name of that television show? The American. Number two, who played the lead in that? I don't remember. Number three, do you remember who played the lead in the television show? Number three. John Wayne, I believe. <coughs> uh, number two, there was a story that that picture was phony. On what was that story based? Well, the story is not true because the picture was not phony. Uh, there was a picture taken later on, which was set up by me, uh, which we had all the fellows come around and I took that picture, but the original picture uh, was not phony. It would, it would have been better if it had been set up, I think. <laughs> number one was it? Johnny. Uh, Number three, how many of the, uh, there were what, five? Six. Six. How many of uh, those gentlemen are alive today? Two, sir. Do you know the names of the two that are still living? Yes. Pharmacist Mate Bradley and Private Rene Gagnon. Uh, Mr. Rosenthal, number one, uh, what is the highest point in altitude on Iwo Jima? Uh, Mount Suribachi, which is uh, about 550 feet in altitude. About 550 feet. Yeah. Uh, I, I was going to ask what Betty asked about being staged. Was there more than number two? Was there more than one picture taken of that actual raising? Was there just one? Yes, there was a second picture taken uh, when the flag was up. In other words, which, which picture is actually shown? Is, is on the stamp? Is that the one? No, the first one when, when the uh, pole was going up and they were raising the pole. Was the one that's on the stamp. Peggy. Uh, number one. Uh, on the way back to take the second picture, didn't something happen to one of the six? No. Uh, number two, wasn't one of the six killed on the way back to, you know, to going back to have the second picture taken or like to get the citation? Oh, you mean the citation in, 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 in later on in Washington, you mean? No. Because three, three of the men were lost in combat. I see. Uh, number three, uh, 
is this this statue is on the banks of the Potomac River, but is it not also in Arlington Cemetery? Yes, it's part of the Marine Field in Arlington. Right. Uh, number one. Right, that's all the time we have. Very memorable occasion we had here, but it's time for us to memorialize it ourselves with our ballots. So will you kindly do so now? Mark your ballots without consultation. Vote as you do so for number one, number two, or number three. Our team of challengers will, as is customary, receive $250 for every incorrect vote. All set, all ballots marked. Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted here for number one, strictly on the strength of the fact that the other two didn't know who played the part in the television show. I think they might possibly have been interested enough to know that Lee Marvin played it very well. Betty Furness, your vote, please. Well, I voted for number two. I ruled out three because he thought it was John Wayne. I think number two looks like he might be a photographer. Yeah. <laughs> Johnny, what about your ballot? I have really the slightest idea. I, I voted for number three <laughs> because I, I know a fellow named Sam Rosenthal, and number three looks a good deal like <laughs> Sam Rosenthal. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like the refreshment of good sound reasoning yes. behind <laughs> these votes. Peggy, what about yours? Well, I voted for number two just because I have a feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Not a Sam feeling, just a feeling. <laughs> All right, there we have it. The votes are in and the minds are made up. And now it's time for us to find out who's right and who's wrong, which we will do in a little different way, because here to show us which one of these men is the real Joe Rosenthal is one of the men who appears in that actual picture, former Marine Corporal Rene Gagnon. Mr. Gagnon, would you do us the favor, sir, of pointing out which of these three gentlemen is the real photographer? Oh. <laughs> 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 Mr. Gagnon, it's a great privilege and pleasure to meet you, sir, and to have you here with us tonight. Uh, exactly which one of the men are you in that picture? I'm the first one standing up behind the staff. First one standing up? Yes, there's one kneeling over and the first one standing. First of course, one. there's two shoulder to shoulder, but it's on the other side. You just see the helmet. I see. All you can see in the picture is your helmet? Just the helmet. Well, you'd have a hard time getting away if somebody else wanted to claim it, wouldn't you? <laughs> no identifying marks. Well, you must be mighty proud of your part in that historic event, I'm sure. Yes, sir, but I am. Uh, no prouder than we are to have you here tonight, sir, and to meet you and have you part of our show. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, let's find out about the other two. Number two, you got most of the votes, sir. You fooled the panel. What is your real name and what do you really do? Uh, my real name is George Simon. I'm called the Dean of American Jazz Critics, and I'm the author of a new book, The Feeling of Jazz. Well, <laughs> And number three, may I have your real name and what you really do, please? My name is Jack J. Hess, I'm Vice President of the Exterminating Services Corporation, the Pest Control Division of National Cleaning Contractors. <laughs> <laughs> well, sir, thank you very much. In checking over our score, we find that you really did a good job on the panel. There were three incorrect votes at $250 each. That means a total of $750 from Salem Cigarettes, as well as, of course, a carton of Salem for each of you. Gentlemen, thank you very much. And again, to you, Mr. Rosenthal, we're mighty proud to have you on our show. Good night. God bless you. Panel, may I present our next team of challengers? What is your name, please? My name is Jean McGregor. My name is Jean McGregor. My name is Jean McGregor. Again, panel, will you follow along with your copies of this affidavit? I, Jean McGregor, a nightclub owner, play cards for relaxation. I am particularly fond of the game of gin rummy. Several years ago, while on a visit to Las Vegas, I entered the International Gin Rummy Tournament. I have entered the tournament every year since then. Finally, my persistence paid off. 
In competition with over 700 players, I won a trophy, $10,000 in cash, and the title of 1961 International Gin Rummy Champion. Signed, Gene McGregor. Very well, we have three people here, each one claiming to be Gene McGregor, Gin Rummy Champion. And we will start this round <coughs> of questioning with our own Gene Gin Rummy expert, Peggy Cat. Oh. Uh, <laughs> number two, Gene McGregor, uh, what is a meld? What is a meld? A meld is a run of uh, three cards of any suit or three of a kind. It could be in a run or three of a kind. I see. Uh, number three, uh, what is the limit on the Chemin de Fer game at the Sands? I'm not familiar with Chemin de Fer. I see. Um, number one, what can you knock with in tournament gin rummy? It depends on the card that is turned up. I see. Um, number three, how many people can play gin rummy at once? Well, uh, two to four. Four? If you're playing partnership. Tom Poston. Thank you, Bud. Uh, I, I may be making a serious mistake here, friends. Forgive me. I think that I recognize uh, one of the contestants. There was, uh, seemed to be a little more suntan at the time, but I'm pretty sure I know one of the contestants. And I think I'd better disqualify myself on the grounds that I do. Unless you want me to go ahead now that I've confessed. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll count that a disqualified vote. That will, of course, count as an incorrect vote in the scoring and add to the credit. I could ask you count. some questions, bud. Well, try. Go ahead. <laughs> no, never mind. Uh, Betty, what about you? Uh, I don't know any of these people, so I'll have a go at them. Number one, where is your nightclub? My nightclub is in Los Angeles. Uh, where in Los Angeles? It's the Keynoter on Santa Monica Boulevard. Number two, what is the hotel that recently burned down in Las Vegas? Oh, I'll have to give a no because I don't live in Las Vegas. Well, I, it says here that you played there. I thought you might know. Number three, do you know who, uh, what hotel burned down in Las Vegas? Um, I believe it's uh, Rancho Vegas. Number one, who runs the Sands Hotel in Vegas? Jack and Trotter. Who ran the Macombo in Hollywood? Charlie Morrison. Johnny Carson. You know, I don't know what he ran, but that's the question. I don't really know whether I do. I'd like to know one of the contestants. <laughs> um, number, number three, what, what is a perfect shuffle? Uh, perfect you, shuffle would be... Uh, Distrib distribution of all 52 cards. I mean, one alternately, you mean? Yes, sir. Uh, number two, can you tell me what a jog, J-O-G, is? No, I'm afraid I don't. Number Sounds one, can like you four. tell me what that has to do with cards, a jog? I don't have any idea. Can you tell me where the Encore restaurant is in Los Angeles? It's on La Cienega Boulevard. La Cienega. It's well, that brings us to the moment of Snyder, Blitz, or what you will. So mark your ballot. Panel, mark them now without consultation and vote as you do for number one, number two, or number three. All ballots marked. All right, Tom's will be judged as an incorrect vote. Uh, so we'll go to you. Betty, for whom did you vote? Well, I voted for number one. If she doesn't own a nightclub, I don't know why she's here, because she doesn't look old enough to own a nightclub. She may not be a gin rummy champ. She knows Los Angeles very well. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny Carson, what about your selection? I voted for number one. I'll vote for her for anything. <laughs> <laughs> and Peggy, what about your vote? Well, I voted for number three because uh, I figure she owns a nightclub and knows a lot about Los Angeles, but, gee, that perfect shuffle got me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we have it. With one disqualified, uh, having disqualified himself, Tom, that was always an incorrect vote, and numbers one, one, and three voted in front of uh, Betty, Johnny, and Peggy. So now, it's time for us to find out who's right and who's wrong as we learn which one of these persons is the real gin rummy champion. So will the real... Gene McGregor, please stand up.
<laughs> I tell you, if it weren't for Peggy's vote, you would have had a perfect blitz, or Schneider, whatever you want to call it. Number one, would you tell us your real name and what you really do? You garnered most of the votes here. My name is Barbara Burns, and I'm an interior decorator with Burns Furniture in Oxnard, California. That's how come you know California so well. And number two, may we have your real name and what you really do, please? My name is Momi Kai, and I'm a travel consultant with an organization known as Orchids of Hawaii. Thank you. Well, we checked the score, and we find that, uh, again, you uh, challengers did all right. For the second time tonight, there are three incorrect. $250 each, that's $750, and that's not bad, is it? Especially if you've had fun, as you seem to, and you certainly gave us a great deal of pleasure. On your way out, please also collect a carton of Salem cigarettes. And we thank you for sharing your evening with us. Good night, and God bless you. For the record, before we meet our third team of challengers, uh, which one of the uh, well, I, challenges I, did you I know? don't know what I did with the card now, but I had written down number one. Uh -huh. That's the girl that I thought I knew. And as I recall, she was working for Steve or doing some work for Steve Allen out in California. When and the reason I knew about the suntan is because I helped borrow a bathing suit for her or something. I didn't remember her name, but I, I remembered that, that she looked pretty darn cute there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's end this by meeting our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Jim Beatty. My name is Jim Beatty. My name is Jim Beatty. Again, will you follow along with your copies of this third affidavit, panel? I, Jim Beatty, am a runner. While in college, I was captain of both the track and cross-country teams. I was a member of the United States Olympic team in the 1960 Games. I have run the mile outdoors as fast as 3 minutes and 58 seconds. I am the first man in the world to have run the indoor mile in less than four minutes. Signed, Jim Beatty. <laughs> this time, panel, we have three fine young gentlemen, each one claiming to be Jim Beatty, champion mile runner. And let's start this first this round of questioning with our own runner, Johnny Carson. Johnny? Thank you, Bud. Uh, number one, uh, you've had a lot of uh, articles in the paper or about you lately, whoever the Mr. Beatty is. And, uh, and the article I read, uh, Mr. Beatty has made a statement on overemphasis in athletics. Do you, do you know what I'm referring to? No, I'm sorry, I do not. Number two, do you know what I'm referring to? No, I'm sorry, I do not. Number three, do you know what I'm referring to? Mm, no, I'm afraid I don't. He is here tonight, isn't he? Yes, he's here tonight. <laughs> Number two, what time do you get up in the morning? Six o'clock. Number one, what time do you get up? About 5.30. What do you do then? Pardon me? What, what do you do when you get up at 5 o'clock? Oh, I go work out. Uh -huh. Number two, can you tell me your times for each quarter of the mile? Oh, 59, 102, 102, 59, something like that, roughly. Peggy. Uh, number three. Uh, you ran recently in Boston, and so did the man that jumped. He also competed. Uh, did he win as well? His event? Uh, I haven't run in Boston. I... Oh, <laughs> well, there you are. Uh, num <laughs> number one, uh, who was the first man to break the four-minute mile? Roger Bannister from England. Uh, number two, was Roger Bannister from England? Yes, he was. Uh, number three, who was Glenn Cunningham? Glenn, uh, he was a great sprinter. Uh, number... Tom Poston. Thank you. Uh, n number one, did you compete in, in uh, Los Angeles oh, within the last couple of months? <clears throat> yes, I did. Did you have something to say about the reason, uh, number one still, that your, our distance teams were going to get better? That our distance what? Our distance running teams were going to get better. Yes, I did. Do you remember what it was? Why? Yes, because we're training much harder now than we used to, and also we have a very excellent coach in this country now. Thank you. Uh, number two, who competed against you in that mile run in uh, Los Angeles, number two? In Los Angeles, Peter Close. Peter Close. 
Betty. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Number three, who is the outdoor running champ at this time? A fellow by the name of Peter Snell. Who was, who, uh, who did he follow? Who's the last one? Uh, John Harris. Number one, do you agree with that second answer? That John Harris was the champ before this last, before the current one? I believe it was Herb Elliott from Australia. Number two, who do you think was the one before the current one? Herb Elliott from Australia. Uh, number two, just out of curiosity, why is it possible to run faster outdoors than indoors? Well, indoors you're making 11 laps. Outdoors, only four. Ah. Oh. Well, there it is. Too. Now, you may have lapped yourselves, but let's see whether you did or not. Let's see, come try to bring up an... If they could just run around yeah. the stage... No, I don't think we're going to have that. Oh, no, they're, they're not in uniform. <laughs> but you may, if you like, but mark your ballot at the same time. And do it now, without consultation, voting as you do for number one, number two, or number three. I wish they'd run once around the studio. <laughs> okay, all ballots marked? Everybody set and ready? Tom, for which one? I, uh, I, I, it's funny because I thought it was number three when I first, but Glenn Cunningham just put me off completely because he was, of course, a great miler. And uh, when number one answered that question about the coaches, I remember that, that he said, if it's the same man, he said that the distance teams were going to get better in this country because of the better coaching that they were now receiving. I thought he was an older fellow, though. Well, we'll see. Betty. I voted for number one because he's trim. <laughs> Johnny Carson. So am I. You didn't vote for me. <laughs> uh, I voted for number one because the other two fellows looked a little bit out of breath coming down the stairs. And I thought, <laughs> and such a short distance. Your vote. Well, I voted for number one, but I think it was number three because Glenn Cunningham did finish fast. But anyway, I voted for number one because he's so healthy looking. <laughs> All right. That makes it unanimous for the first time tonight. All for number one, and let's see whether it's all for one or one for all as we find out the truth of this particular round and learn which one gets to the barrier first and breasts the tape before four minutes. So, will the real Jim Beatty please stand up? Yeah. <laughs> Boy, well, that changed the thing around. Panel didn't do too well in the first two, but he sure came through in a blaze this time. Uh, incidentally, Jim, I recently read, I believe, in Sports Illustrated that you give a great deal of the credit for your wonderful record to your coach. I think his name is Mihai Igloyi. Yes, that's correct, and I do. You swear by the coaching. Okay. Let's find out about these other two gentlemen now. Number two, what is your real name and what do you really do? Uh, my name is Tom Holt. I'm a sales representative for White Weldon Company, members of the New York Stock Exchange. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Three, may we have your real name and what you really do, please? Uh, my name is John Avelson. I'm a parachute jump instructor at the Tri-State Parachute Center in Flemington, New Jersey. Hey! <laughs> well, we checked the score this time. We find a clean sweep for our bright, bright panel. They really came through and jigged out. That means, of course, that from Salem Cigarettes, you receive $150. But, gentlemen, I hope any difference between what the others have won and what you won tonight is made up for by the fun that you had. We certainly enjoyed having you here. Good night, and God bless you. <laughs> now, here's how you can get relief of headache pain. Just for the record, since Jim Beatty is an amateur athlete, he has appeared, of course, with the special permission of the Amateur Athletic Union of the United States, and we are sending his winnings to the AAU Olympic Development Fund. Well, that's all we have time for tonight, panel, except every time I see these facts, they always frighten me to death. Every 14 minutes, somebody dies in traffic accidents. It's almost impossible to believe. You can help stop it, however, where traffic laws are obeyed and uh, enforced. Deaths go down. Also, drive safely and use safety seatbelts. They also cut down and save lives. Good night, panel. I, th I think we kept Mr. Beatty an amateur tonight, didn't we, we Bud? We kept an amateur, yeah. No, no winnings at all? No winnings at all. That's what I did. <laughs> good night, Bud. This is Bud Collier saying good night for Salem Cigarettes and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> to tell the truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production.